Hello, I'm Joseph, and I finally got it to work in Android. Um, I will say that this has been way more of an undertaking than I was expecting. Um, but yeah, it's now running now, so I can go ahead and debug it. It is a bit on the slow side because I am lo loading up all the debug libraries rather than the release versions. Uh, so that's there, and I can go ahead and stop this and change this to 100, so it'll only show a few. Um, I don't have live reload on Android, just like I don't have it on iOS right now. And that's not a big concern right now of things, but there you go. Now it's running with 100. So pretty straightforward in that. Um, next is Linux. I actually have more work to do on Android, but for now I'm just leaving it because I just wanted to get the the a working version of it just to make sure um, that if I move forward, I'm not going to have to do like a big rewrite. So as of right now, I didn't really have to do any changes with the actual like core engine stuff. It's more or less along the long lines of the PHP source code. So unfortunately, I do need a custom version of PHP's runtime um, to work on Android. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and that will be the rest of this video. So if you don't want to know anything else, then that's just my progress. But here's a couple of things I've had to do. So um, first and foremost, I actually found a project that already does some type of patching for PHP to run on Android, but that's not the embedded version. That's like the runtime of, of, of PHP. So like there's a, a patch for DNS, which I was having some issues with, and a patch for F Open Wrapper as well. Um, so, and this is actually provided by the people who make Termux. So Termux is a like a Linux terminal, or a Linux actually, literally like like ability to run Linux on Android with all like the Linux type of tools. Um, and so they provide patches for PHP and they, they have it in these patch formats. Unfortunately, um, I need to do some additional work on my part because this doesn't always work in, a, in however they were trying to do it. They actually have build scripts too for how to compile PHP on Android. Um, but none of that really worked. It was just some of the patches that they provide for that. And, and they're fairly small, but at least they gave me like a good starting ground to work with. Um, and then as far as things I needed to do, if I go to commits, um, I'll run through some of these here. So there is uh, main.c. In main.c, I had to pass in some utility functions, and that's because when I initialized the PHP runtime, which is up here, uh, these utility functions could not have been passed in prior. You would have to create your own startup embed init function. Uh, which is a heck of a lot more work than just be able to pass in some utility functions. So log message, error, print f, f open, stream open, so on and so forth. Uh, so I did that. And then um, let's see here for the wrapper. This is just that patch that I showed from Termux people. Um, and then the this one's kind of important because that's off, you know, the utility modification to the core embed structure, the SAPI module. Um, and then I think the bulk of my changes for here, and this is kind of the big important part. And that is that even though I can pass in a file descriptor from Android into C++ to PHP to read, um, at, when I pass the file descriptor in, it is to a, uh, an archived file. So that means that if I was to include a PHP script like, um, main does, so main.php includes frost.php um, it can't read frost.php it reads the whole archive so it's 20 megabytes of like binary data it's reading and it really can't do that so i needed to be able to modify the php source code to be able to um take in i'm getting lost here uh an offset where why is this not showing to be able to take in an offset and go to the offset i need to get rid of this bit here actually this shouldn't be there um to be able to read the, read in an offset of it and the fixed length of it because what it was doing it was reading from zero to the full 20 megabytes and trying to evaluate that as like a, like a php code and it's not and the reason why of all that that's happening is that uh in your project for android uh where is this my project for android let's see no um, your assets folder is basically an archived folder you can tell it to not compress it so here i have been php json dat for files for extensions to not compress because i want to be able to read it without un decompressing it um so when i want to read frost.php from an include from uh main.php i need to do an offset because it's it's bundling all these files together 
um, in the assets folder. And so you need to read from an offset to a specific length and not to the length of the entire file. So I've just had to go through the PHP source code uh, and make the changes needed there to be able to support that uh, in those different uh, mechanisms. So stream had that there. Uh, I think there was another modification I did here. Yeah, so I was just going through and then changing and adding the offsets uh, to that. And um, yeah, just some very basic stuff. This was just to make sure I could get the actual file length of that archived file, not the full length of the full archive file. Uh, so yeah, just some basic stuff. Um, not major changes to the code base for PHP. So when I want to upgrade to PHP 5 or not, not 5, 8.3, um, these changes are still fairly minor and that they can be easily applied so I can upgrade to the next version of PHP when I release the engine. And it's not going to be a major big deal or any kind of major breaking issues. But that will mean that means moving forward, I will have my own branch of PHP specifically designed to work for on Android. Uh, this is not needed for anything else. But as I was doing this, I did find out that it is going to be useful to hook into um, the the error logging stuff. Um, so I may eventually want just my own custom branch anyways. But just the error logging will be helpful to be able to bring up into like maybe a console in the game engine. So you're not having going to the terminal and read it. For now, that's not a big issue. That's not a big concern. It's nice to be able to just to compile libphp, embed it in, and I'd have to have a custom branch of it like I, I need for Android. So that's it. Android's here. Um, I have more work to do on Android, but it's enough to get me like root it and now be able to move on to the last bit, which is Linux, and then going all the way back and including um, SDL Mixer for audio, um, SDL TTF for text, and then Box2D for physics. These things are going to be much more easier at this point because now I have a building foundation for all the various platforms I want to support. Consoles are just out of the question for now, so I'm not going to worry about for Xbox or PlayStation or Switch. Those are certainly possible, but I'm just not going to bother uh, for the time being. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have something finally working for Android.